I don't think it's an exaggeration. This might be, this might be the most important video I have ever made because it's about the top 10 rules for audiophiles. At least they're the top 10 right now. I might change them in the future, but right now, the most important rules for audiophiles. And rule number one is the most important rule. We're going to get that out of the way right on top. And you've heard me say this before, so it's not going to surprise anybody. The most important thing an audiophile can do is to experiment with speaker placement. If when you bought your speakers home and just plop them down where it was convenient, you're not getting the sound you paid for. It's as simple as that. You have to. I don't care how much of an expert you are or how experienced you are or how many speakers you own. You have to put in the time. You have to experiment with the distance, how close they are to the wall or more likely how far away they are from the wall, the distance between the two speakers, uh, the, the angle of the toe in, and other aspects of placement. They're just so monumentally important. Uh, you got to do it. And if you don't, you're literally not getting the sound you paid for. So that is rule number one, the most important. You can stop right now if you're already bored. No, but rule number two is, is this. Buying speakers or considering speakers or electronics or anything based on measurements that the best measuring products will sound better, that is a fool's approach to buying audio. Audio is very subjective and personal, and your room is your, your room. It just, the measurements can just be so misleading that unless you're an engineer, you're really going deep into measurements, you're more likely to be misled by measurements than helped by them. And that's rule number two. Rule number three, digital recordings and analog recordings both of them can sound absolutely fantastic. Great, no holds barred. The format itself, analog or digital, whether it's an LP or a CD or a file, this has nothing to do with predicting what you're gonna get out of the recording or how good it sounds, how real it sounds, how much it moves you. In any of those examples, analog recordings can do it on LP, or analog tape if you prefer, or digital on files or CDs or, or streaming they can all sound really, really good. That's rule number three, which is closely followed by rule number four, is that analog can sound bad on, on vinyl disc or on tape, and CD, whether it's uh, or digital, whether it's CD or stream or MQA, whatever, they can sound bad. It doesn't, it's not gonna tell you anything whether you're likely to like the sound of a recording. Recordings sound the way they do based on the decisions that were made by the engineer and the producers and the band in terms of what it sounds like, what microphones were used, how the microphones were placed, the mic preamplifiers, the processing, the equalization, the compression, a million decisions go into making the sound of a record. And if they're the wrong decisions or they're wrong decisions for your aesthetic, it's not gonna sound good. And analog or digital has little or nothing to do with it. So don't get hung up on analog versus digital. So that was rule number four. So rule number five is simply this. When it comes to sound of recordings or a system or speakers or electronics, whatever, trust your ears. It's your ears <laughs> or they're your ears. It's your taste. It's what you want out of music and no one can really uh, offer any assistance in that. I certainly can't. I don't think reviewers can. I don't think people who own stores or even your smart friends in audio can help you. I think it's something each of us has to figure out on our own. What, what sound makes us happy? Okay, rule number six. No system, no matter how expensive, no matter how expertly set up in the most wonderful room, no matter what, no great super duper system can ever sound like the real thing. That has never happened. I've heard a lot, a lot of really expensive systems, really well set up systems. They never sound real. They just don't. They don't sound like an orchestra or a rock band or doesn't, just doesn't go that way. So having that expectation that suddenly you're going to reach 
you're going to pass some threshold and suddenly everything's going to sound real. No, it, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened yet. It's not to say it will never happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And I've heard some of the best stuff around. And no, we're not there yet. Okay, number seven. Number seven is if you have an awful sounding room, it's too echoey, too reverberant, too boomy, too this. If your room is square or worse yet, a cube. If your room has bare floors and lots of glass or mirrors and hard surfaces and there's lots of reflections, it's not going to sound good. It's just making, uh, getting better speakers or better anything is not going to make that sound good. It's just not going to. And forget hi-fi. If you put an actual, you know, if you played a piano in that room or an acoustic guitar or had someone sing, it's going to sound terrible. So if you have an awful sounding room, I'm sorry. I am sorry. But that leads us to rule number eight. The cure for awful sounding rooms is <laughs> don't listen in that room. Well, don't listen to music with, with, don't listen with speakers in that room. Get a good set of headphones. Headphones can sound great. I mean, a lot of, head, a lot of audio files have a thing about headphones. They don't sound like speakers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, they don't sound like speakers. But they can totally eliminate the room. All the problems of room, even good rooms have their problems. And a great set of headphones gets you right into the recording. It's a direct connection between what went down, what went down to, the, to tape or to analog or digital, or whatever. It gets you closer to the actual sound of a recording because you're not hearing the reflections and problems of the room. Rule number nine, size matters. Meaning big speakers have it all over little speakers or even mid-sized speakers in terms of power dynamics, life-size scale, or closer to life-size scale. Small speakers can sound great. I love small speakers. I really do. I've spent most of my life listening to small, not large speakers. But now that I'm living with something over the long term, the well, before the, the Klipsch Forte 3s and now the Cornwall 4s, size is, you can't get around it. If you want power, if you want scale, dynamics, you need to live with large speakers. There is a larger speaker that makes sense for your room size. You can't cram gigantic speakers into small rooms. That's a disaster. Um, but if you want big, if you want big sound, you need big speakers. And now we're coming to the end. We're coming to rule number 10. And that is simply this. What this is all about is having fun and enjoying the music and feeling something from the music. And it has nothing to do with the price of the system. You can do this with a $100 system. You can do it with a $100,000 system and everything in between. It's having the right stuff for you. It's allowing you to connect with your music, whatever kind of music it is, all kinds of music that you like. If you can get closer and more out of the music and you're digging it and you're dancing and you're you can't go to bed because you keep wanting to play more stuff on your system you're doing it right hi-fi a great hi-fi a great audio system is about how it makes you feel that is rule number 10 it's right up there with rule number one it's it, it's again you know forget rule number one rule 10 might be the most important rule and now it's time <laughs> for me to say thank you guys for watching. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, which right now is coming up five or six days a week. Uh, if you dig it, please subscribe. Please share these videos with your audiophile pals. Give them a thumbs up when you think they deserve it. Give them a thumbs down when you think they deserve a thumbs down. You can follow me on Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audio filiac. Now it's time to say goodbye. But I have to also say thank you so much for watching. And I hope, I really do, I hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye.